Hey, I've been invited to Wine Central to chat about bubbles, and in particular, bubbles on a budget. I mean, I'm amazed at the amount and the different styles and prices and how do I know what to go for? There's a few things to know with sparkling wine, and that's two different production methods, which will often pinpoint what sort of price you're going to be paying for the wines. The one method is a traditional method, which is the way champagne is made. Now this obviously involves a lot of tender loving care, a lot of TLC, passion, love, it takes a lot of time. The grapes for champagne, which differ from sparkling wine in other countries potentially, is Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Pinot Munier. Now these are the grapes that are legally sort of written in the rule books that are the ones that are used to make champagne. Whereas with Prosecco, you use the grape glera, which is really aromatic, which is why Prosecco producers prefer the tank method, which some champagne connoisseurs say, oh, but that's the cheaper way. It might be cheaper, it might be less laborious, not the traditional method, but when you're working with Glero, the grape, it's a very aromatic grape, and you really want to keep that vibrancy and that freshness alive in the Prosecco. And let's face it, what are people drinking the most of right now? Prosecco, because it's so fresh and fruity and lively, and it's it's like a damsel, it's like a daisy dancing in the sunshine. It's, it's really light and refreshing, it's lovely to drink, and it's literally sitting at about a quarter of the price of champagne. With sparkling wine, they come from different regions. So we're talking about champagne from France, Cremant from France. From Spain, you can buy Cava. From Italy, you can buy Francia Corta, which is basically champagne. It's made exactly in the same way. It's just labeled Francia Corta because it comes from Italy. Um, we've got things like uh, Method Cap Classique coming from Cape Town, South Africa. We've got Method Traditional coming from the South Island or New Zealand. There's a lot of sparkling wine being made around the world and it's time, I really, really feel it's time for people to explore. You don't always have to spend a lot of money on a bottle of champagne when you can buy six bottles of Prosecco, Carvo or Lambrusco for the same price. Most of these sparkling wines that come from Spain or Italy, they have their native language on the label, which is why you just need to remember important things like Prosecco, or Cava, or Francia Corta, or Lambrasco. I know they're not really the easiest words to remember, but just remember them, because then when you see them, you'll be like, oh, let's try that, haven't tried that before, and you know it's a sparkling wine. So this is a Prosecco, and the reason I've just blabbed on about all the labeling and everything, is because at the back, if you turn it around to have a wee little squiz, it's all in Italian, and it's not gonna make you any more the wiser. So I think we should taste it, and I can tell you what I think. Should have my wine knife with me. The sommelier is watching, please don't judge me. Okay, and then the magic five or six, usually it's a six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep the pressure on the cork. A slow twist of the bottle. Another twist of the bottle. And you don't want it to pop, you just want to pick. Oh, that was a bit of a pop. There might be a lot of bubbles in here. Tell them to calm down a little bit. Calm down in there, mate. Okay, the Prosecco, let me grab a glass. Okay, so it's lovely and light and pale and bright and sparkly like any Prosecco should be. There's a good amount of bubbles. You can see the bead coming from the bottom of the glass. It looks quite beautiful. Let's have a swirl at her nose. She's fresh. She's apple -ish. There's a bit of pear. There's a bit of sort of chamomile going on. Mm, and it's so refreshing. And there's that touch of sweetness. It's not really sweetness. It's more fruitiness, but it comes across as being slightly sweet. Just a touch. It's lively, bright, easy to drink, quaffable. Everyone will enjoy it. There's no fault in it. It's bright, it's fresh, it's refreshing. You've got p flavors of apple and pear from that lovely glare of grape. Just imagine this small aromatic grape with all these beautiful light nuances of flavors and floral notes. I mean, some call it feminine and a little bit pretty, but everyone loves pretty. Everyone loves a little bit of happiness in a glass. And this is just what Prosecco is. Happiness in a glass for you to enjoy and to share with people you love and care about. Okay, so next up, we're gonna taste some kava. Now, the reason I love kava is because it reminds me, oh, let's pop that there. It reminds me so much of champagne and I can literally pick up a bottle for like $30. This is the Fresh Net Carver. Now it's actually pronounced Frex with an X net. But because it's Spanish, the X are pronounced sh. So you can basically call it the Fresh Net. So it's a very fresh net bottle of Carver. 
Now this is an extra brute. So what this means when you see extra brute on the label it means extra dry. Let's give it a whirl. And you don't always have to sniff wine. I just sniff wine so I can get the whole experience. Yum. So we've got a lot of pithiness going on. We've got a lot of acidity. I think this, this sort of carver you'd want with food. So anything thinking your aioli, your turkey, your white meat, your chicken. Um, so Christmas, I mean, I'd have this with a pavlova. I mean, it would be divine. So with carver, there's a lot of, as I said before, pithiness. There's a bit of lemon, lime. There's some chamomile lifted sort of, um, not really floral notes, more her not even herbaceous. Um, how would I describe it? Like chamomile, sort of almost a dried her herbs, herbiness. So a bit of chamomile, lime zest, a um, bit of lime pith, lemon. You can almost say there's a bit of white pear going on, maybe just ripe pear. It's a very um, fresh and refreshing carver. Um, I can easily see myself enjoying this with, with friends. And hey, maybe if I do a blind tasting, they won't even know it's not champagne. This Francia Corta comes from Italy and it's made in exactly the same way as champagne. So expect to find those lovely biscuity, bready aromas with a little bit of sort of white pear and apple. Let's open and let's find out to see how this little baby tastes. Now remember, this bottle is pressurized. There's a whole lot of bubbles in here waiting to come out. I mean, if I was the neighbor next door, I'd be like, knock, 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 turn it down in there. Because there's a lot of bubbles and all these bubbles are going to come out. So remember that when you're opening the wine and keep the pressure down so the cork doesn't hit someone in the eye. That actually happened to me once. So we're going to twist this. And normally it's between five and six twists. And I can almost feel the pressure. But you just want to twirl it so softly. And I do the bottle. I twirl the bottle and I don't twirl the cork. You'll feel the, the thing, and you just want it to slowly push out. You don't really want it to pop. You're not, what's his name, the Formula One driver, like going shh with all the champagne. You want to drink this. You don't want it on the floor. So here we go. La Francia Corta. This is the Contadi Castadi Zero. So this is a lovely, fresh looking label. I love modern looking labels, especially coming out of Italy, because they're very tra um, tradition bound. You'll see it's called zero. Why is it called zero? It's got zero dosage. So what can we expect from this wine? This is gonna be very dry. Let's have a taste. I'm just gonna get my glass. So it looks like champagne, looks like Prosecco, looks like Cava, but it's Francia Corta. So we get a swirl. Now when I give a wine a swirl, it's not, I'm not trying to look like a wine wanker or a wine snob. All I'm doing is I'm releasing those aromas to my nose so I can smell the wine. Beautiful. It's like there's a lot of brioches, lime, green apple. Ooh. I think there's got a lot of Chardonnay in. I'm getting a lot of white pear and white apple. It's very refreshing. I think this is best drunk on its own, perhaps, as at the beginning of the night. It's quite a a structured, sort of composed wine. This will definitely impress a girlfriend or a new lover or your stepmom or man, that neighbor who you've been trying to impress for years now. Invite her around and give her a little bit of this. She'll love it. Yeah, I could drink this. This is good. Mmm. Cool, well that's Francia Corta from Italy. I'm only human and I like nice labels and I like nice bottles and when producers put in that extra touch of ensuring that their label is beautiful, their bottle is beautiful, both, it does attract me to the wine. So winemakers make note, I love this bottle. So again, we'll just put our thumb up on the cork to keep it in. Three, four, five twists, maybe six. And then what we can do is slowly just Move it up, and we just want it to pop out. You don't want it to spray out, because remember, you're losing what you're gonna be drinking if you do that. Okay, so next up we're tasting a Lambrasco. I love Lambrasco, it's been a bit of a, well, it's been the underdog for a while in the sparkling wine world. Not taken too seriously, but in the last 10 years, it's undergone a revolution, and it's divine, and it's so drinkable, and I only wish people were drinking more of it. In the UK at the moment, I think they're selling more than Prosecco. It's really, really popular. 
So let's find out what all of this is about. Oh, it's so sweet on the nose. You've got, it's like walking into a candy shop full of fruits of the forest. Blackberries, cherries, a sweet cassis aroma. There's a bit of violet, like a, a lift of violet aromas. Oh man, it's juicy. It just makes me want to drink it. Oh, all I want to eat with this is like pork belly and like something really fatty. Mm. Um, so cherries, pomegranate, forest, um, fruits of the forest. And you know what? I even get like hints of balsamic vinegar in a really good way. That's like a really sweet sort of tartness on your palate that I love. I'm saying that this does come close to where... Um, balsamic vinegar is made in Modena and good old spaghetti bolognese this and a big bowl of spaghetti bolognese oh my god be delicious yeah man this is smashable and it's just so different it's unique bring this out at a party people will be like huh what's that is that a Shiraz you'll be like no mate this is a Lombrusco get it right up next we have a Cremant from France which basically is made just like champagne, again. But this time you can use a variety of grapes like Pinot Blanc. You can even use Riesling to make a Cremant. So again, it comes from France, so you've still got that sexy French thing going on. But it's just not from champagne. Let's see what it tastes like. Remember you just want a little pop like that? Lovely little bit of Smoke. I've always found that so mystical. That little bit of smoke that comes out the bottle. Wow. There's that gorgeous sort of pale lemon, almost pale white golden color. The bubbles are very vigorous. There's lots of little thin sort of beads going up. It looks delightful in a glass, I guess. I mean, something has to look good and for order it for, to taste good as well. So let's have a little swirl. And a lot of people ask me, why do you swirl your wine, Gemma? Like rolling their eyes in the back of their head. Oh, yeah, the wino. And yes, you can swirl sparkling wine because it does the same thing. It releases all those gorgeous aromas into your nose so you can experience the wine. I mean, life is about experiencing and this is one of the experiences you're about to have. Mm. It's got those lovely... I'll actually keep it in my hand, it's quite good. It's got those lovely sort of biscuity, bready notes, baguette think, brioche think, the smell of sort of kneading, um, kneading bread dough. But compared to champagnes, it's a bit fuller on the palate, slightly more generous, which leads me to think I'd be wanting this wine with food. So I'd be wanting to enjoy it with sort of a white meat, your chicken, um, maybe even your like meaty, white fish thinking John Dory this would go really well with the John Dory oh and it's got that lovely apple white pear there's a bit of white peach it's a bit more generous and it's a bit more voluptuous if you think of I could say this is the Ashley Graham actually of champagne it's full-bodied it's lovely there's very generous on the palate there's lots of flavors it's really tasty I mean, I'd rather be drinking this than spending $120 on a bottle of champagne. Mmm, I like you, Cremant. You can stay. Oh, how I love you, champagne. There's always going to be that draw to champagne. Let me just tell you this. I mean, I know there's all these other sparkling wines to go for. And yes, they all have their occasion and they're all beautiful wines in their own. But let me tell you, if you want the pinnacle, if you want the penultimate sparkling wine to serve if not the penultimate wine out of all the wines in the world to serve it would be champagne um for its recognition in festive occasions and i mean they've created such a a feeling just when you hear the word champagne you think of celebration and festivity and love and togetherness and company and good times right so let's see what's in this bottle so here we have Champagne Veuve Bonneval, which is obviously a product of La France. Um, it's labeled Champagne on the bottle, so you know that this Champagne actually comes from Champagne, which is a region in France. 
which means it does command a higher price. But I think this is sitting at around the $40 mark. If you're serving a whole group of people, don't aim the bottle like this and open it, because 10 to 1 Murphy's Law, you're going to hit the oldest, most frailest granny sitting there in the head, and you're going to cause disarray. So hold that thing down, point it away from your guests, and twist the spiral. Slowly use the bottle, and you just want a soft pff noise. So we don't want to pop. We got a little pop. Anyway, that's how things go sometimes. Let's see what it tastes like. You see, that's what I love about champagne. It's that smell. Like imagine, even in, where is it, in Milford, there's that place, La Tropezine, that French cafe, where you walk in and they're making fresh baguettes every morning and pastries and little patisserie and there's croissants and there's pain au chocolat and you just smell that smell. That's what I'm smelling right now. Like a, a mix of baguettes and brioche and a little bit of peach, white peach, elderflower. There's a bit of like green apple, lime pith, a bit of zestiness. One thing you notice with champagne is the bubbles. The bubbles feel slightly more silkier, um, slightly more malleable, like they take the form of the glass so beautifully. This is definitely for a special occasion. If you want to splash out, splash out on this bottle of champagne. Enjoy it on its own as an aperitif. Oysters, it's got a lovely like nuance of like oyster shell or sea spray. So enjoy this with fish or oysters. It'll go very well. I mean, even chips and aioli go really well with champagne. So if you fancy something less fancy, grab yourself a burger and some chips with lots of aioli because aioli and champagne are a match made in heaven. Let me tell you something. Mm. Good job. Thanks, Verve Bonneval. Yum. Let's look at this bottle of Piper Heidseek Champagne, and this is a rosé. Number one, it comes in a box. That immediately tells me it's a gift, it's something special, it's for someone special, or it's something flash and fancy and commands a higher price. So that immediately makes it a seem, or makes me assume that oh, champagne is more valuable than Prosecco or Carvel or Francia Quarter. But just remember, guys, it's not the case. Think of the world of marketing and advertising and branding. And let me tell you, Champagne, the region of Champagne, they got it right a long time ago. And in fact, I think Apple and all these amazing brands have learned from Champagne themselves. Pink and gold, my two favorite colors. I would have liked to have a wide knife, but I shall fake it till you make it, right? And that's quite cleanly done there, voila. So again, make sure the champagne's not facing anyone. You don't want to cause any damage. You don't want to be sued on New Year's Eve for popping out someone's eye, that's for sure. Six easy swirls. Keep your thumb on the bottle. Turn the bottle really slowly, and you'll feel the pressure start to release with the cork. And again, you just want a soft pfft. Let's see it'll, if it'll happen. That was perfect, guys. And see the little bit of smoke? Isn't that sexy? That's what makes sparkling wine sexy, you know? They just look so good, they taste so good. Oh, so the first thing I notice, look at that beautiful, like, salmon, light pink, almost. Oh, there's a bit of mandarin in there. Call it light salmon in colour. It's a beautiful colour. Let's give it a swirl. Oh. Mm, what am I thinking here? I'm thinking of something here. So imagine like strawberries and cream in like a little puff sort of pastry vibe. Maybe with a bit of like sour cream on the side just to enjoy with it. Mm. Yeah. So again, guys, a lot of passion in the vineyards and in the winery, a lot of tender loving care time, tedious work, doing things like turning the bottle a little bit each day, it really shows in the final product. And that's why you pay more for champagne. The, it just smells elegant and refined and there's finesse. 
I mean, if you imagine the French woman, for example, they dress so well, they always look so beautiful, they're so well manicured and elegant and just gorgeous, and that's this wine in the glass. I can just, oh, an actual fact, I think it would go amazingly well with some snapper. It'll go really well on its own. There's strawberries, there's a hint of cream, bit of yogurt. You've got lovely sort of brioche, biscuity, ginger notes. There's a hint of ginger in there. And it's quite weighted. It's quite a medium to full bodied sort of mouthfeel on your, in your palate. So you can have this with a lot of food or you can enjoy it with food. You don't only have to enjoy it alone. And this, my friends, is why Champagne is so delicious and has such an amazing name because you can really taste the love that has gone into the glass. So don't be scared to splurge out next time you have champagne, but don't forget about the other wines like the Proseccos, the Lambruscos, the Carvers, the Method Traditionals. The world is out there. It's your oyster. You need to explore all these amazing sparkling wines because there's something for everyone and there's something new to be discovered around each vineyard.